Yeah, I, I think, well, there are uh, lots of theories we all use, but I think um, what I wanted to address in the keynote very particularly is the fact that we all deal with the theory of other and othering, for example, that we all uh, deal with the fact that some groups, some individuals, some, some identities are um, not part of what is the norm. And we, of course, if we look at the, the field of media and communication, then we deal either with how we communicate in relation to that or how we portray, for example, uh, certain identities and how uh, some identities are portrayed different in an other way and are being othered in relation to the norm. Uh, so I think we use a lot of very interesting and diverse uh, theories, sets of theories, other framework of knowledge, other methodologies, but that's something I think we all have in common. Um, also, the notion of identity is something uh, which is very present in all of our work. Um, I wouldn't say that we use all of the same kind of methods. There is really a diverse uh, way of how you could research uh, gender and sexuality in media, um, from very quantitative research, from surveys to experiments, to a very uh, more innovative research in relation to creative methods, uh, uh, where you co-create with uh, media audiences, uh, for example, scenarios in relation to uh, characters in fictional, um, in a fictional uh, content. Uh, so there is really a diverse way of how we do research. But the one thing, of one of the main things we have in common, we all do research um, on how certain groups are uh, portrayed, are. Uh, not part of, of, of uh, media production or are uh, how they are dealt differently in media or portrayed differently in media. Yeah, what I think is important that we don't stop to innovate also in relation to theory, not only in relation to methodologies. Um, but um, what is, I think, of importance is uh, the dynamics of what gender is. In the beginning, the, the first research in the field of gender and media, for example, was very binary and eh, looking at, at women and men in media. Now we see that uh, there is research on gender expression, on gender identity, on non-binary uh, identities and so forth. So this has changed and, and it's been more inclusive eh, and less in a, in a binary, uh, sort of binary paradigm. So, and, and I think we, we still, there is still some work to be done to be, we also ourselves need to be very inclusive as well. And sometimes not, uh, Consciously, of course not, I don't think that, but sometimes by the categories we use or uh, frameworks which are a little bit outdated, we still use uh, because of, of, of the fact that, that good research has been done in that way. Um, we just take it for granted a little bit. So we, we need to reflect on that. I think we need to be critically on that. We also, I think as academics, we are, in that sense, we are quite privileged uh, um, that we can do this kind of research. Uh, the fact that we mostly are very literated uh, in that sense. Uh, so that's also something we, we need to uh, keep in mind. We need to reflect on uh, and, and we need to approach. And that was also part of my keynote. We need to approach what we study with care uh, and and um treat the the respondent the audiences the media users wh whoever we research with care eh? and as equals even if there is also a part of of uh, a power dynamics eh? uh, in relation to the researcher and what you study eh? there's also something going on in relation to power 
Um, but I think that's something we really, yeah, we, we can work more on, I think. Yeah, and also um, develop the theory more uh, in relation to that. Um, yeah. I think one of the difficult parts is for, for example, the study of media audiences and effect, uh, in a sense that it's very difficult to grasp the effects of media messages and media content. What we grasp very well is contemporary, contextual effects in a certain moment. But uh, we have to be careful not to sort of um, describe them as if that's then uh, the only kind of truth out there. Uh, so that, that is a little bit tricky because uh, how audiences re relate to media content, that's really complex. And, and most of us already left behind uh, the media message and then the effect eh, in the behavior. Eh? But, but this, this sort of sometimes very linear way of thinking about the media effect is, is something we need to dig in deeper. How, how can we research this particular aspect, I think? Uh, because now, especially in media studies, uh, we are a little bit reluctant to go there eh, uh, in the area of effects because we know that's very complex to grasp them, but we need to go there. Eh? We need to delve eh, or to dive deep into that area and see how we can deal with it uh, on a methodological uh, level. Of course, th that's quite contextual, I think. Uh, I think, for example, in Spain, maybe the discussion will be a little bit different if, if we're talking about social impact and how uh, the research on gender and sexuality in media is, is um, perceived by larger audiences. Uh, from my experience, I think uh, that there, there is really a need for uh, media professionals also to get hold on this kind of knowledge. I think they would also benefit of this kind of knowledge yeah, to create better media content for larger audiences. Uh, because as we see, young people really want different representations in relation to gender and sexuality than, for example, my generation was used to and even expected. Uh, so if, if, if media, professional media or content creators are smart, they need to have this knowledge and we can offer them, that, that's one. Uh, what is also, I think, something which we need to be careful that the discourse on the research is not something which is sort of put away as this is yeah, some feminists who think uh, uh, that uh, we need to change something in relation to media content. Uh, there's, there's more at stake than that. Uh, so I, I think there, there are arguments for, in a way, mainstreaming what we are saying and what our outcome of our research is to get it out uh, for large audiences, media users, to media professional policy makers, uh, but we also ourselves need to talk to them. And that's something we often be a little bit reluctant maybe to do so, uh, but we need to um, uh, offer uh, our knowledge to, to media professionals and, and to policy makers at large, I think. And that's something uh, I have some experience with, with content creators in Belgium, especially with the public service broadcasters, and they, they, they want to learn, they want to improve, uh, they want to make more inclusive media content. For commercial broadcasters, it's a little bit different story. So um, I think it's, it's uh, important that we share our knowledge in that sense. Uh, so that's important, I think. Uh, in relation to impact eh? 
uh, how uh, science or knowledge, uh, very specific knowledge, science, scientific knowledge, can have an impact on, on society at large.